Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer and listener, my name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. I welcome you uh, yet again to one of the you know, best podcasts in the country, certainly in Southern Africa. I hope we are not exaggerating, I trust I'm not. Uh, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. I have a guest by the name of Tato Ntwaneng. I'm about to introduce her to you. She's a dietitian, just a clue there, a holistic dietitian. But before I do, can I just ask one small favor? Just hit that subscribe button, please. We need your support. We want to stay on uh, in touch with you. I want to remain on this medium. And we can only do so if our numbers grow. Please hit that subscribe button. I beg of you. Welcome to the studio, madam. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Thank you so much for having me. I'm truly, truly an yeah. honor. It's a dream come true. My checklist. <laughs> I promise you. This is the how this is, is how you start summer. <laughs> yeah. This is how you start summer. Okay. All more of it, I guess, of wisdom. This is how <laughs> you start stuff. summer. Great yes, stuff. sir. Yes, sir. Just tell the viewer who you are and share a little bit about your background. All right. I am Taton Zoning. I am a dietitian, a clinically trained dietitian. There are so many dietitians nowadays you want to be careful, mm. you know, to make sure that we're we're, we're clinically trained. Mm. Uh, right? Mm. Uh, and um, I run a private practice in Khaboroni, NutriCure Clinic. Um, What's it called? NutriCure. Yeah. So we cure with nutrition. Mm -hmm. NutriCure Clinic, right? But I am uh, partnered with um, a few friends called Atlaga Health Center. Mm -hmm. So that's where I see patients, but in the private space, in okay. the private practice space, you know. Okay. Erra, erra. Can you tell me about your training, your formal training? Um, so I, I was trained in institutions that have been licensed to train food science. So food science is, is a part of alternative medicine. So where you would have the traditional medicine, Edipilisi, right? So, but food science would be where we use food to cure diseases, food to correct diseases. So I actually trained in Asia, which mm. is a good thing because Asians are big on healthy living. They are mm. big on living long. Mm. And so to be exposed to that was quite exciting. Which part of Asia? A Philippines. I'm oh. a Filipino. 10 oh. years in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah. So I had to come back home and practice what I learned. Okay. Right. And it, it's been such a blast. Okay. It's been a struggle, but a beautiful one. Okay. Yes. It's been now, beautiful. What does it take to become a dietitian? What do we have to go through? The passion. Mm -hmm. You have to love it. You have to love it. It's a new science. Mm -hmm. It's something that people do not know, people do not understand. The idea that what you eat can help you with your livelihood. The mm -hmm. idea that what you purchase, mm -hmm. your lunch hour can give you, you know, long life. It can help you with your diseases. So you need to have the passion for it. Mm. And then you also have to have that understanding of science, you know, your chemistries, because when we say something is bad for you, we don't mean the taste. Mm -hmm. We're talking about its chemical makeup. So we go back to all of that. So you need to also have an understanding of science. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also understanding of diseases, because primarily we treat metabolic syndromes. So you need to have an understanding of diseases as well. Just speak in English, metabolic syndrome. Oh, so your non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. your lifestyle diseases, your mm -hmm. cancers, diabetes, hypertension, obesities, all of these things that affect your metabolism, mm -hmm. all of these things that slow you down, that have you in your doctor's reception room. Mm -hmm. That's where I come in. Okay. That's where I come in. Let's go to the beginning. What sort of uh, enticed you, what sort of triggered your initial interest? Ooh, I like that. Mm. I was raised in a very typical Adventist home, Sabbath-keeping, Seventh-day Adventist home. Mm. And so every other meal was holistic. Mm. We had so much fresh food. We had food. My mother never let us eat junk foods. 
Um, I remember one time my father would be so frustrated that I have a medical aid that nobody uses because you never fall sick <laughs> because you're always eating healthy. I need you to fall sick to use it. Uh, so I think that Joking. triggered... Joking, yeah, you know. And when you're a kid, you don't understand why. And mm. then um, I think that triggered the idea of just teaching people how to eat healthy. Mm. So my family, my background really had a lot to do with that. Okay. So it didn't come as a foreign thing when I started learning about the chemistry, um, when I started learning about the biology of food. It was mm. something that I had long started and I enjoy cooking good food as well. Did you consider the medical route becoming a doctor? I did, but I, 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 I must say... I'm a lazy... I started with the lawyer thing. Mm. And then I, re I realized it's too much reading. Mm. And then the medical thing. My medical friends didn't sleep. I said, no, mm. I can't the crazy hours, you know. And then when I found food science, I said, this is beautiful. This, mm. this is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I did. I did consider medicine. I did. Okay. But they were just not sleeping. Dentistry. So, no, that was not healthy. What, what does an, an, a dietitian do in an average day? So what we do is we get um, referrals. The way Botswana system is set up, and allow me to talk about the Botswana system, mm. we work with doctors mm. where general practitioners or specialists would refer a patient to say, I'm seeing a patient who is obese who is overweight and who has knee problems or has insulin problems and they'll need food. Mm. The most beautiful part about being a dietitian is that we don't use debilisi. Mm -hmm. So we use what is in your pantry, what is in your shopping list, your basket, because the body needs a break from all these medications. Mm. And so what we'll do is I will take a client through that history, helping them understand why the disease is dangerous mm. and how food can help them overcome mm. all of that. Mm. Nowadays, I even changed the idea of the holistic dietitian. I I swear I do counseling because mm. you can't separate how one looks from food. You can separate that emotions, that beauty, the mental space from food. So we take you through all of that and help you understand that the reason why you're always tired mm. is because of ABCD. The reason why you're irritable and moody and rude, mm. you know, is because you're eating the wrong food. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're bloated and you can't sleep and you can't have good sex mm. is because you're eating the wrong food. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's huge. It really is huge. Speak to the, the saying, let food be your medicine and let medicine be Ooh, your food. That's beautiful. Is that from uh, the, the Hippocrates. Hippocrates? Yes, yeah. the father Hippocrates of nutrition. Hippocrates. Hippocrates, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so that is really true because when you break down food, we know the plate, the basic carbohydrates, protein, fats. That's what people know. Mm. But deeper than that, you're talking about your phyto chemicals, you're talking about nutrients mm. that are holistic and very, very clinical. Your celliums, a lot of these came out during COVID, when mm. we're at the very peak of COVID, when people were taking extra vitamins, people were boosting immune systems. It has never been more true then that mm. food should be your medicine mm. because no was no person and a little concoction. Everybody had something to mix and put together. Mm. Just to show that at the very cellular molecule of who we are, food clearly is our medicine because mm. it is what the body knows. It is organic in nature and these are organic beings. Mm. These temples are organic. And so what better marriage than having something organic feed into something that is organic? So food really is medicine. Let's talk about SAD, S-A-D, Standard American Diet. Mm. Isn't that supposed to be the, 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 the real monster out there that is really the biggest threat which has trickled down to even us all the way the side of the world yes. it has trickled down to us you know when when they had said like the it, it says, really is it yeah, really is sad you know do you know when i knew that had trickled down mm. was when in Kanye we started having hamburgers for grandmothers mm. when they started up putting up shops where our parents could eat pizzas you know we're not going to use any names mm. but that's when i knew that sad is really everywhere now mm. because um what what has happened is it has really eroded what the zona died looks like mm. it is attractive in nature it is tasty it is affordable and so when you compare that to our typical pan mm. you know it just it's, it's, it's a losing game mm. you know so it, it 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 has become the standard for what eating is but mm. it's the very Ar americans who are trying to reverse it mm. to say you should not be eating this and so i guess we're following suit mm. Mm. Is, is science is, is there science of diet or is it an art of diet? Right? It is, is it more of a science than an art? It is a science more than an art, really. Mm. It's understanding your chemistry, your laboratory. Mm. I use your lab results. Mm -hmm. I just don't tell you you must reduce cholesterol. I have to see the numbers. Mm -hmm. I have to see the science behind it to see what your three months have looked like, what your past six months have looked like, and where I want you to go. Whether mm. you are a boss, a manager, an entrepreneur, a hustler, a mother, I need the numbers. Mm. So that's what really backs it up as a science. I believe 30, 40 years ago, um, Africans never used to have heart attacks. Yes, sir. Um, 
what happened? I mean, I don't want to just ascribe it to said. Mm. Life happened. Populations mm. happened. We needed to preserve our food longer. We needed to have systems that could beat the changing climates. Mm. And that, that meant we had to sacrifice something. Our health had to be sacrificed. Mm. Because if I need the seed to grow fast, mm. I'm going to do things to it from its very biological... Right, you said it. You mm. said it, right? Mm. And... And this has to end up in somebody's body, somebody's mm. stomach, somebody's liver that has no idea what these pills are, that has no idea what these chemists, these pesticides are. Mm. And so we had to join the rest of the world because we have populations we have to feed. Mm. We can't sit by the wayside and wait for these crops to grow mm. on their own time. Mm. And also when they are on the shelf <clears throat> life, we need to prolong them. So we put food additives. We put Things that preserve the food, we call them food preservatives. Mm. The ones that sometimes are licensed and sometimes are very not licensed. Mm. And that's where all the cancer started coming from. Mm. That's where the appetite started increasing. Mm. Because now people wanted more and more and more of these things. Okay. And in t even even uh, doses, isn't it? In that's terms true. of sizes. Of course. Because of, of the flavorings, the colorants. You can't just have a little. It must be a lot. Mm. You know, it's not only with children, even with adults. Mm -hmm. So we are not accountable for our sizes. One of the biggest things I teach is portion control. Mm -hmm. Teaching you how to portion your food. Mm -hmm. To say it can't be too much. Mm -hmm. It also can be too little. But it also can be too much. So you see, even with the sizes, things have changed. Back in the day, your grandfathers probably just ate enough for lunch. Mm. They would go about their business, come and eat for dinner. That's it. Nowadays, we graze all day long. Mm. All day long. And that's where the diseases are birthed from. Yeah. In terms of portions... <laughs> I had someone saying that you should eat equivalent to your fist. What is it that you're eating equivalent to your fist? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I came across it somewhere. Yeah, because that's always changing as well. The mm. science of it is always changing. Mm. There was a time when we used to say a place should be half your carbohydrates and then share the rest with your vitamins and your protein. Mm. Now we've changed to say it has to be more... Um, vegetables, more salads, and then the fist of the meat, and then half of your carbohydrates. It all depends on your activity. If mm. you are a gym person, if you're into fitness, that activity changes as compared to somebody who is a teacher mm. or somebody who's in the office sitting all the time. Mm -hmm. So it all depends. And that's why my holistic approach is for individuals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now let's talk about lifestyle diseases. First, define what those are. They're exactly that. Mm -hmm. Diseases that come about because of the lifestyles that we have. So these are called non, non, um, these are chronic lifestyles, right? Right. Non-communicable. You can't pass them from one person to the other. Unlike the HIV AIDS, right? Which mm. has transmissions. Mm. Unlike COVID. Mm. So these ones are really about the lifestyle that you lead. Mm. If you are not active, for example, you don't go to the gym, you stay driving, you don't go to work, you stay in-house, you have, you're prone to being more obese. Mm. If you take on more sugars, you would have more diabetes. If you take more fats, you would have cholesterol. So your lifestyle determines. So those are the big three. Those are the big three. And hypertension as well. Hypertension yeah. as well. Those are, now I like that you said the big three. Those are the Khaboroni, Botswana diseases. Uh -huh. On the daily, we deal with hypertension. We deal with diabetes. We deal with also your high fat, your cholesterols, right? Which give birth to things such as constipation. They give birth to things such as, you know, hormonal imbalances mm. so it's not just them it's them and their children and their grandchildren you know it just grows roots and then mm. it further on so those are lifestyle diseases before we used to say you only get the at certain age we used to stay in in your 40s oh no oh, even in your now 60s. we have juvenile now mm. we have you know if you're alive you're prone of having them mm. we have babies who have you know high cholesterols we because have teenagers of because of what you feed them we have teenagers who are obese Mm. who struggle with, you know, diabetes, who have to inject themselves with mm. insulin. So now everybody, everybody is, is prone to have those. The fact that it's a lifestyle disease means it's reversible. Let's, Ooh, start, with, beautiful. let's start with a high blood pressure. How would you reverse it with diet? Beautiful. I love the word reversible mm. because it's a, a word up for debate, mm. especially between the medical field and the dietetic space. Mm -hmm. Like, is it really true that you can reverse diseases? Mm -hmm. Can you really reduce the dose of medication if you put in more diet? You know, so I love the fact that you said that because you can reverse diseases. Wow. Having started in the Philippines myself, I have seen agent methods where diseases would be reversed, have been within close proximity of professors who would reverse diabetes. You know, have a 
Jesus moment. You're healed. Walk mm. away. You're healed. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> that type of thing. But how you reverse that um, hypertension, for example, you have to look at your lifestyle because li- hypertension is a stressor-induced disease. Mm. If you're constantly on the up and up, constantly stressed, you know, constantly running behind deadlines, there's not enough rest there's not enough balance right so your heart is over overworking mm. and then also the amount of fat you're taking it could be hidden fat sometimes people don't even know that the food is fatty right and this is why we say for the fat that you can see remove it mm-hmm. right the fat on the steak literally remove it shave it off right mm-hmm. um change your fat your oils as well um change to vegetable oils your olive oils do not fry the food so much mm. steam it bake it roast it do not fry mm. do not fry <clears throat> and, and 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 what about saturated oil Ooh, those are the ones that are affordable actually <laughs> those are the ones that are affordable and so they are most convenient and mm. most uh, available mm. those are the ones that create plague and calcification for your veins mm. this is when the strokes come in how, how do you identify that this this one is not it's not good oil this is good oil. we usually use the plant and animal sources mm-hmm. if it's plant source it's really good mm-hmm. right it's easy to digest if it's animal source that's the one that we have a problem with mm-hmm. right so if you have your coconut butters your coconut oil which some might say they also cause cholesterol, they'll still be better than your animal sources. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where you tell the distinction. Yeah. So when you're walking into a shop, per se, right, and you're looking at these things, you just look, where does the plant source come from? So mm. your sunflower, your canola oils, those are still better. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Yes. Can you settle that for me? What's the difference? So the body makes its own cholesterol. At least 75% of the cholesterol is made by the body. And that is the good cholesterol that the body needs for its own chemical reactions and the liver, the bile, all those things. That's fine. But anything else that comes from diet, more than that, that is the one that is dangerous for you. Because it adds on to more of what the body already has. Mm-hmm. And so it needs a place to go. So where does it go? Your blood vessels. It attaches to your blood vessels your arteries it finds itself and this is why it it becomes hard for you to breathe because Mm. you know oxygenated blood is not carried easily because there's a clot Mm. there's a clot it's the same diabetes is the same you know when when sugar sticks and you know there's not enough insulin so there is good cholesterol that the body makes but then there's the bad one that you shouldn't be messing Mm -hmm. with because it's also hard to reverse it Mm -hmm. it really is hard to reverse it no The, the, there's a, a debate, isn't there, between alternative medicine mm. and original mm. traditional medicine. Where do you fall? I, I would assume you are in the uh, alternative medicine. I am. I am. How are you settling this debate, especially when it comes to being able to claim for medical aids and so on? I think, um, first of all, I respect everybody's perspective. Because I am one person who is open to learning. If you look at Ayurvedic medicine, which is Indian-based, it has done incredible, incredible things in terms of healing space. They have come up with ways that do not stress the body so much that are very easy on the body. So that's, that's really okay for people to have those type of things. Mm. But when it comes to alternative medicine, is that we, 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 we're not... I'm not going to ask you to go and get um, things that are not easy to understand into your body. I'm going to get you, ask you to get lettuce. You know that. It's easy. Mm. I can take that to the bank. Mm. Onion, it's easy. You mm. know. The thing about traditional medicine sometimes is that, is it really proven? Um, when I was doing my internship in Marina, I would uh, run around, I, I would come across cases where people either use traditional medicine to heal one problem, except it would have started another problem. Mm. Right. So those are the things where... Yes, it might have healed one thing, but because it's not used cautiously, Mm. now you have a problem on the other side as well. Mm. And so do you really want to be living life like that? You close this loop and then Mm. the other tap opens. This Mm. tap and then the other tap opens. Mm. You know, it was the same for us when we came into the space with medicine, Mm. with very serious medicine, where people were like, what do dietitians do? Are they necessary? Mm. You know, pills can do all of that. Mm. You know, until Botswana, we're like, no, we're tired of pills. There has Mm. to be something that's easier Mm. because you can't live on a pill your whole life. You know, remember I said these things start in your early 30s Mm. in your early 20s now you'd be 60 you still are taking medication Mm. i mean that's not a way to live it's not it's it's not a nice way to live besides don't a lot of these medications have shocking uh, side effects Mm. Mm. Um, i mean they give you this it'll cure your diabetes but it might kill you or it might cause a heart attack or something the depression that is going around when you just read the the side effects 
in most of this, it's horrifying, isn't it? It is. Mm. Sometimes it's not even something as bad as killing you. It's just increasing your appetite. Mm. You are constantly eating. You don't understand why. Mm. So now you're dealing with one thing, except now you're overweight. Now you must find medication to deal with that as well. Yeah. So there's this cycle of dependency that's also quite dangerous. Mm. So unattractive as well. Yeah. Is it possible to achieve a totally pills-free or medication-free existence? I, I, it's beautiful. I'm not on pills, some of you, you know? No. I, I'm not, I'm not no. on pills. It's, it's a beautiful life as well. It's mm. possible to achieve it, mm. but it also I mean, needs... 60, 70, for instance. Uh, be, it really is possible, but it's the discipline that backs it up. Mm. Mm. It's the discipline that backs it up, you know? Because you can't say, I don't want medication, but you're living and eating as how you please, mm. you know? So it's, it's saying, I, you want the best of both worlds, yes, mm -hmm. but you also want to be healthy. Mm. Yes. How detrimental are these lifestyle diseases and to what extent do they affect um, a lifespan of the community? So I might not have numbers in terms of what happened during COVID in Botswana, but I know that I, I've, I've followed so many articles where most of the people who passed away were people who had pre-existing lifestyle diseases. Either they had obesity around um, the lung area, so the lung capacity was reduced, or they had complications with diabetes or cholesterol. Mm. That on its own really brought to light how bad these diseases are. Because it could have been easy to treat COVID, but now when the body already has this history mm. of complications, that made it so dangerous. Mm. But even now, families break up because of lifestyle diseases. Seriously, it is hard to manage a disease. Mm. It is expensive to manage a disease. It is emotional to manage a disease. Mm. And so before they kill you, they'll depress you. Mm. You just don't enjoy life any longer, mm. you know, mm. because you, you constantly have to take medication. You constantly have to visit the doctor. Mm. You constantly have to learn new things, change this medication, change this ratio. It's not working. So before they kill you, your life is just not, it's mm. not fun. But if you're to... To, to list the culprits, the biggest foods that really, uh, as it were, digging our graves with, what would be the biggest culprit? Soda, sugar. Soda as in Coca-Cola? Yes, And sir. it's uh, related? It's cousins. Cousins, yes. 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 Please note, Mokhobe Nuggets of Wisdom, you said the word, I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't. In, in case a yes, comes right, around. right. But okay. you can say, because you it could be my lawyer. Yeah, yes, okay, okay. sugar. Mm. Sugar is actually the new salt. Remember mm. a while ago, we would talk so much about salt. Salt mm. is bad, reduce salt. Ooh, sugar. Mm -hmm. Sugar and its cousins. So, so, so soda. Yes, because um, you're drinking it. Number one. Yeah. Um, Oils, fats. Oh. Fats, yes, yes, let's say fats. Saturated. Or just saturated, any. saturated, saturated, because yeah. we also have good fats. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then carbs, empty carbohydrates. What are those? So empty carbohydrates are simple sugars. Um, it's any food that is a grain that is not brown. Mm. So your white so rice is... Everything white. Everything white. Except if it's a dress. But I mean, oh, I like that <laughs> one. No, beautiful, beautiful. Anything white you can't eat. Unless your dietitian tells you to eat it, because there are cases where I will ask you to eat white rice. Mm. If you have what we call irritable bowel syndrome, mm. where your body cannot process the grain, it mm. cannot process the brown food. And so I will recommend white rice. Explain to people why white things are dangerous. White things are dangerous because they don't have um, the bran part of the cereal. They've the been reason overly processed. They've been overly processed. The reason why they remove the bran is because bran is very organic. So it's, it's, uh, its exposure to spoilage mm. is expensive. It can cost you a whole, mm. a whole you know, harvest. Right? So when you process them, then they don't spoil as fast. Mm -hmm. So this was done purely from a commercial point of view. It wasn't because it's good for the body or anything like that. Right, mm. and so what happened was your body eats this thing, and nothing meters the sugar. So it, it, you eat the white stuff, you feel full, but they disappear from the stomach real quick. Mm. So they mess with your blood glucose. Mm -hmm. You feel full, and then when they disappear, you lose. Yeah, you know, blood. there's that blackout, the fatigue. Mm. You're yeah. constantly tired. Now it's chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm. Right, even from the brain, you are just tired. Mm. And so this is why these are not healthy. Mm. Yeah. So this is what we call them empty carbohydrates. Your sugars, your baked goods. You know, the candies. So how do we how do we overcome the overwhelming pressure to get these things in terms of advertising, mm. in terms of the food industry? Mm. Yeah. How do we those lone voices such as yourself and a few others come out when 
the industry is so strong, the marketing is so strong. Can I please use South Africa as an example? I, I love what you're saying that, you know, like our voices need to come up. Personally, for me, my voice needs to come up because like I said at the beginning, I'm passionate about this. In South Africa, you will find that shops are making the idea of grains more attractive to say you can have the best of both worlds. How do we have make sure that you have your food, but you also have good salads? And so they really raise that they resonate with good salad, good fresh salads, right? Whereas this side of the country, we still are big on... Remember, it's, it's also a lifestyle thing. So we're still a big seeing in certain places, eating certain foods, feeding our children certain drive-bys. That's still, that, that, that's still a thing for us. So you need to have the discipline. You need to have the backbone that says, I can go to a drive-by once a week. It can't be every day. It can't be every day because the rest thing that the next thing you're feeding a family mm. that that just becomes your story. Everybody knows when we find you, this is where we find you. So mm. Motswana needs to understand that food doesn't define who they are. Mm. You don't have to be seen at a certain restaurant. Mm. You don't have to be seen drinking a certain drink for us to say, "Oh, you've made it in the world." Mm. You know, you can make it in the world with your herbal tea. Yes, with, with your herbal tea. That's what I'm having. Yeah, beautiful. An <laughs> afternoon herbal tea. Mm. It doesn't spike your sugars. It hydrates you very well. It doesn't mess with your sleep patterns later. So it supports your, your, your journey. It supports mm. you as a leader. It supports you as, 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 as a visionary because that's what you want. You want support. You want things that lead you somewhere, not you things that take you back. That's true. The day. That's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. There's the issue of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. What are your views on it? So, because I'm a constant student, at first I was not about it, right? I was like, no, you need to have breakfast, you can't skip meals. But insulin, the, the idea of fasting really deals with the idea of insulin. Insulin that can make it so hard for you to gain weight because you're eating every three hours. Mm. So when the insulin wants to, you know, process itself, um, have its right ratios, you eat. Mm. You eat, you're constantly eating. So the body gets to a space where... Ah, can't help you lose weight. Mm. Your, pathway, your pathways for weight control are hard. You have auto-intoxication. Like the dirt is coming back into your body. But when you fast, mm. ah, when What's you fast. What's your definition of intermittent fast? So it is literally being deliberate about not eating for a few hours of the day. Like maybe reducing from three meals to two meals. Reducing from three meals to two meals because the time that should have been for the third meal, you've decided not to eat. Mm. Yes, you've decided not to eat. You don't snack and then you will say, for, for me, when I put my clients through it, you snack usually or you don't snack? sometimes you do snack, sometimes you don't. Mm. I have clients that I would say you don't eat breakfast. Your first meal of the day would be 11 o'clock. You will snack at two and then dinner and then that's it. Mm. Right. And then later when we move along, you don't have to snack at all. Mm. So what happens is your body acknowledges that you're not eating. So it can fix itself. Mm -hmm. It can fix itself. I like using the example of the, you see the gentlemen who are constructing the highways. They had to close that space so that they could construct. Imagine if it was open. Mm. We're driving through while they are fixing. When? When do you fix it? So insulin is stubborn. Mm. It needs its time and space to say, I'm fixing myself. Mm. Mm. But it's just that sometimes people really are so hungry, they can't do it. What is the idea of three meals a day anyway? We started that. So the idea of three meals a day, for example, with the breakfast, the mm. idea was to break the fast from the night before. Yeah. But you would break the fast if you've eaten early. Not when you're eating at 2 o'clock at night. What fast are you breaking? You, you just left now, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. So the idea was, so you start your morning with the right fuel. You mm. fuel your body right, and then you can sustain your whole morning. Without any snack, without the 10 o'clock, mm. you know, no tea, no nothing. You can go um, like that. So, but the breakfast has to be heavy mm. as well. Lots of carbohydrates, lots of protein, so you don't feel the need to snack early any time around 10, 11. Mm. And then you'd have your lunch, and then you'd have your very light dinner. Mm. So you go to bed without the body so full. Mm. So that was like the right way of people eating. But what happened was you'll find people who skip breakfast because of work or who overload the night before. So they are bloated from the night before. And then in the morning, they want to add on. Mm. Which is not good. Which is work. really not good. Yes. When you spoke about the culprits, you didn't mention maguinha and the papa. Oh, that's empty calories. Mm -hmm. That's the empty calories, the baked explain, goods. Explain why. The baked uh, goods. Explain that. First of all, remember I talked about the white food. Mm. What makes the fat cake is the white flour. Mm -hmm. That on its own is dangerous. Mm. Then what do you do to the white flour? You take but it and Batona you dip it in. And that's why Batona is unhealthy. 
Mm-hmm. That's why it's unhealthy. Look, I will tell you, this winter was brutal. I had fat cakes, but I can count the number of times I had them. Mm. I promise you, it does not pass this finger, you, these fingers, you so, know. So the problem is every day. Bad, uh, fat cakes and the papat. They are equally bad. I know sometimes I can say to somebody, maybe the papat, I'm just saying that's why I meet you halfway. Mm. But the fact that it is bread. And it's white. It is white, and you eat it every day. You know, why must that be eaten every day? That's yeah. my other thing. You yeah. need to skip days where the body is not processing. Remember, it's also bread with yeast. Mm. It's not just bread. It's not bread so with yeast. salt, right? So the yeast that we have also, um, our stomachs cannot digest it mm-hmm. unless it is nutritional yeast, not this commercially bought yeast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the whole bloating, I agree, the, the bread rises. Mm. Now it's going to rise your stomach. Mm. Typical, yeah. Do you have something to tell us about body image issues? Yes. What role does that play? Body Ooh. Image? So body image issues are really something that comes from a long time ago um, when it would, we used to think it was a teenage affair, like when a child is overweight or skinny and they have these issues and they're not happy with them. But it does happen to adults. And we used to think it was a women's issue, but it's also for men as well. So it, it, body image is just when your body turns into something, it morphs itself into something that you are not familiar with right in front of you. It's usually because of the food that you eat. For so, men, it's a thing called abdominal obesity. Yes, it is. It is. And then for the women, it also is abdominal, the visceral fat around the abdominal area. Mm-hmm. But also the thighs, the cellulite, you know, the underarms and all those things. Mm. It's not comfortable, first of all, for mm-hmm. you individually. But we also live in a society that doesn't know how to choose words sometimes. Mm. You know, they are co- quick to say it at a wedding, at a function, colleagues. A society that avails bad food to you but is quick to condemn the result and you're constantly living in the space where you're condemned by what you buy mm. as well as people you live with you mm. know i have clients who will be saying that shy to eat salad in front of people because people say oh you eating salad mm. just stick to your maguinha you know so mm-hmm. it, it is unfortunate but body image issues are also the reason for depression mm. people don't feel beautiful mm. they don't feel the way they feel the weight of the weight on them, not of the world, but on the weight on them, you know, and it, it makes it makes just your 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 very intimate parts of you not comfortable. What can be done about that? People need to be fit. Look, you can't get past your body image issues unless you put the work. Mm. There has to be work. There are people who come to me. I had a client who came yesterday and was, she was so happy about how she has lost weight, but she also still needs to jump on the road and be fit. Mm. So the discipline and maintain. and maintain and maintain, you know, so the self-will to, to mm. be fit, you know, the, the, the discipline to say, I'm going to work on this. But people want quick results. Mm. I always tell somebody, you come to me, my colleagues and I will tell you, you come to us, we need six months. Mm. You know, we're trying to tell the medical aids as well to say people need six months Mm. because you took 20 years to create this body. Mm. It's not going to disappear in two weeks. Mm. So don't come to me if you're looking for, I want to change in two weeks. And no, people Mm. come and say, I have a wedding in April, so you must work on my body. No, no. Do you then factor in an exercise routine in your diet recommendations? Yes, sir. I actually have a fitness training as well. So let's let's do a a, a sort of play with this where I... I suppose I'm patient X, I come with a big abdomen, you know, I'm a typical Moraga guy and I I love my meat. Mm -hmm. Maybe I eat meat twice a day sometimes. Um, What would be your advice and what would be the regimen you would would put in place? First of all, we would acknowledge that the abdomen is a problem. Right, literally go deep into what it does for you, you know, um, for, for your sex life, for your energies and all those things, right? Mm-hmm. And then I will create a plan, a meal management program that also is inclusive of fitness. Though I don't, I'm not big on fitness because, you know, gym guys also will have their own regime. So we end up conflicting, mm-hmm. but I will really appreciate that you really need to be fit. So we look at your time of day, what works for you. Moragaka weekend, when you say you're Moragaka guy, or you actually physically lift those no, things. No, hidden about you just go there. You, you know, because I actually, I actually realized that so many gentlemen would be like, Kya mura keng. then I learned, no, they just go to count the cattle. They count the cattle and they walk around. Right, and, and just be like, the and then just and then be like yeah, this is mine. This is, this is all mine, you know, but you have to be physical. Mm. You really have to be physical because what you do is, when you're physical, you manipulate all that fat. Mm. It starts moving. It starts moving. You displace it mm. and you feel lighter. 
right? Mm. It's when you sweat it out, right? And then after that, when it comes to the meat, we look for other alternatives. Like mm. I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good cook. Um, and one of my future endeavors is to cook for clients as well, to be able to deliver for clients. Because people will say, look, I love the program, but I don't have the time to cook. Or I, I'm, a, I'm a bachelor, I can't cook, you know. And so those are some of the things I'm looking into. So that you don't have any, any excuse. Mm. Also, the new thing, alternative meals. You, it doesn't always have to be meat. Sometimes I can make a client vegetarian for like 10 days. Mm. Just 10 days. You know, if I feel like the hypertension is a lot, the salt is a lot, the cholesterol is a lot, sometimes I just feed you vegetables. Mm. And after 10 days, you feel lighter because you no longer feel process happier. it. Happier. But you can't sustain it because uh, you have to go back to your meat eating. I know, I know, I know. But you know, this is me learning to serve mm. my community. Because yeah. it's also about quantity. That's true. That's true. You, my nano didn't so you're fed like this much. It's so, so it's terrible. Person, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we do want to talk about how aging creeps in, but before maybe we 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 we, we go deeper, there's a chap called Dr. Sinclair. He's mm -hmm. very, very active on YouTube and elsewhere, who says that aging is a choice and is reversible. What are your thoughts? Beautiful words. I could not have said it better. Aging really is a choice. It mm. really is. Um, I come from a long line of women who live long, mm. but not just live long, are physically active, mm -hmm. right? They, they cut trees. My grandmother mm. cuts trees. <laughs> she gets on her ladder at almost 90 and cuts trees. You know, so that's what we're talking about. Whereas somebody else's grandmother might decide to say, you know what, I'm just going to sit, I'm tired. Mm. Aging really is a choice. Mm. And you can reverse it by physically being active, by being mindful of your choices, what you eat, what you watch, what you listen to, right? Um, nowadays, I know that there's a lot of beauty aesthetics in town mm -hmm. people literally are saying inject yeah. you know it's like oh, the way yeah, to go crazy. you know yeah. but also it's it's not just aging skin wise it's also aging inside you know laughing i literally <laughs> have days where i say today i'm going to laugh mm. and i will read memes and I will crack up. And I feel so lighter after that because yeah. it really watch creates... Well. I watch Steve Harvey's old, you know, yeah. like, you know, when you, when you have to reverse it so many times and you just laugh. <laughs> yeah. Because laughter is also medicine. It keeps you young. But when you don't do that, you're irritable. You're moody. You're mm. Life is bitter. Life is hard. It just complains. Mm. You have road rage, you mm. know. How are you not going to age? Mm. Nobody wants to be around that, mm. you know. Yeah, they don't. They will avoid you like a plague if you're they always really complaining. They really do. They really do. Now, the food that I was talking about, the bad food, mm. the sugars also cause aging mm. because there's inflammation of the knees. They age your knees, your tendons, your muscles mm. because of all this processing. Remember, if you don't take the stuff out, the body reabsorbs it. So there's mm. auto intoxication. I read also that it weakens your immune system. It does. It really does. So you're constantly falling sick. Mm. There's flu season, you're sick. Allergy season, you're sick. Mm. Stomach pain, you're sick. You eat something at a funeral. Mm. It, it, it creeps in, you're mm. sick, you know, mm. so you, your immune system is always weakened. So, so really, uh, can you get back to the days when our grandparents, like for instance, my great grandmother was 116 when she passed. Oh out. my goodness. Can we get back to those days? We can because they do it everywhere else. There is this um, huge, huge um, mindset that is called the Blue Zone. So, the Blue Zone yeah. was a, a researcher, right? right. Yeah. The researcher who went to three communities where people were living past 100 mm. in Japan, in Mexico, and in California. Mm. Imagine where and said comes from. Italy. Right, mm. right. So, people were Sardinia living. Or something, yeah. Yes, people were living up to 100, mm. but they were having quality lives. And these were people who were big on soybeans. They were not eating meat. They were mm. eating alternative fish, meats, a lot of fish. They were not getting their omegas from pills, mm. but they were getting it from the right sources. They didn't have sugar. Mm. They didn't have so much salt. So we can get back there. Mm. We can mm. get back there. You know, I, I must but say... Can you supplement your way to health? Hmm. Because this the guy that I mentioned believe in certain supplements. He talks of things called telomeres or mm -hmm. something. Mm. says you can stretch them and keep them alive. And then he's written a whole book, uh, which the effect of which is reversing old age. So and he mentions the importance of these, uh, I, I can't remember what they are called. My wife is more into this than I am. But she, the, the argument is that you can not only reverse it, but you can be 100% sure that you do it. Yeah. And he's yeah. using his life as an, as an example. Mm. For instance, he feels like he's 29 or 30, 
but he's really in his 50s. Yeah. But when he's tested, he feels as if he's 20 years younger. Yeah. I think that supplementing your diet is really good, especially when we live in a space where we don't get the fish as fresh as we should get it. Mm. But we still need the omega fatty acids, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so supplementing is good. It's just that the market is also too wide. Mm. What do you supplement with? You know, who's licensed these for Botswana to say this is okay, this is not good? So you don't know whether it's real Right. Thing. There's supplements that are written in China, mm. in Chinese, and somebody's taking that. You're <laughs> like, wait, wait, hold up. Mm. What what is it called? I can't match in what business do you have with it, yeah. you know? Because it could be made in a factory somewhere, you know, that is not really good for you. Yeah. But there Nobody are, really verifies. Right, right. But there are what we call superfoods. Superfoods mm. are really beautiful. They are natural. They are not processed. So you, what are those? So these are, these are these, the word superfoods is exactly that. Mm. When you have these in your plants, like your seeds and your nuts and certain spices, certain powders, super mm. greens, mm. what they do is they come and some will just help you with filtration. Like just cleaning out your body to make sure that your cells are renewed, you don't have um, toxins, you don't have all these things, right? Like charcoal could be a superfood. Mm. So where once in a while you take charcoal to just really clean your body because they use it to clean skin. So imagine what it would do to parts of the body. Mm. Then you have supplements that really help you with your iron um, sufficiency, the ones that will help you with making sure that your folic acids, your celiums, mm. all of these things are correct. Mm. So I believe in supplementing, but it just has to be the right people that yeah. you supplement with. You mentioned earlier about the, the blue zones and one of the blue zones is in Loma Linda, Linda yes, yeah, the California, in California University, which is a Seventh-day Adventist community and you both, you and I are Seventh-day Adventist to what extent can being a Seventh-day Adventist help in guaranteeing a longevity and a healthy life? Um, so I grew up in a typical Seventh-day Adventist home, Kukanyi um, in the hospital, right? And there was this thing around the village for hey, masavata mm. Or when you get into the shop, the sausage vegetarians, they say, Dijosa masavata, right? Those yeah. soy based, they right? Say that they still say, <laughs> you're like, oh my gosh, you know. Mm. So, what we do in our Sabbath keeping is that we really are big on eating food that is based on fruits and vegetables. Mm. It is just the wing of the gospel. It's, it's just what we do. We're very careful to also not eat certain foods that would be high in fat, right? Um, we believe that there are clean foods and also unclean foods. Mm. And it's also not just us. Other religions also have just jumped in to say, you know what, this is what happens. Mm. We believe in so much water, taking so much water. We believe in fasting as well. Mm. Days where we're fasting and connecting with our maker. But that also Speaking means that you're, mm. that also means that you are not, when you're fasting, you're not eating so your body can also pause mm. right yes yeah. so we don't process our foods we want the food as fresh as possible mm. right so we also are big on legumes grains we're big on legumes we're big on grains and so you will see it in our potlucks there'll be like five beans mm. so we're big on beans as well so we get our proteins from soy we mm. get our proteins from beans and that also can help you live longer mm. because it's easy on the body. It's what the body knows. Dr. Kopano mm. Alman once said to me when I was fresh from school, she said these words, it is what the body knows. And I live said, by that. It is what the body knows. Uh -huh. So it is not foreign. You don't have to teach the body how to digest it. It is not poison. It is what the body knows. Mm. And that which the body knows, the body likes. And it is healthy for you. Mm. So because of that, hence the grandmother who cuts trees. You mm. know, she doesn't eat meat. You know, she so, so because of that, such things, the superfoods that we have in our pantries, mm. that's how we're able to live longer. Mm. Great stuff. Now, we're entrepreneurs, um, you and I, and we are being watched by entrepreneurs. What is the connection between diet and successful entrepreneurship? Mm. And what... What can you add to that conversation? I love that. I love that because I love entrepreneurs. Mm. Whenever somebody walks into my office, Abari, I work for myself. Mm. I just understand. That means you need good support. You need good energy. You need to be alive with quality living. You can't be tired. So mm. you can't be... The, the job or the desk of an entrepreneur is never the same. Mm. It's always changing. The travel, the hustle, you know... All of that is always changing. So in all of those changes, you want to make sure that you are taken care of. Mm. What is the point of amassing all this money for you to just die? Right. So as entrepreneurs, you really want to make sure that you're on top of your shape. It could even be just with your fitness routine. When you're an entrepreneur, you can't afford to get tired 
when you need to be traveling for a deal. Mm. You can't afford to get tired when you need to be marketing. You can't afford to have body image issues. I'm not saying somebody who is in the office is different <laughs> for them. But I'm saying the stakes are higher when mm. you're an entrepreneur. Mm. You know, you set your own hours. You set your own conduct. And it really matters. You only take a break when the job is done. Right, right. Mm. Somebody, somebody, my brother said to me, I'll take a break when I'm dead. I said, no, stop it. <laughs> stop it. You don't do that. So yeah. nowadays we have what we call work-life um, work balance. Mm. You know, that you should also equally play. Go for mm. golf. Go swimming. Mm. Because it's also important to just give back to the body. Mm. For this body that is overworking, it's also important to pause and say, look, Today, we're just having fun so that tomorrow your body's feeling refreshed. There is clarity. So as an mm. entrepreneur, stay on top of your diet. Okay. Speak to this, wealth and health. You can't have one mm. you without can't the other. One without the without other. The other. Correct? It is really true. It is really true. And then which one then is more important? The health one will guarantee you your wealth. Mm. Yeah, because wealth cannot buy you health. Mm. You can have all the money, but it can only buy you receptions for doctor's room. It can buy you more surgeries, mm. but it can't buy you good health. Mm. But when you're healthy, oh, you can go 100 miles. Mm. When you're healthy, we can do this. Mm. We can do this. When you're healthy, you can live generations of wealth. Not just be rich, but mm. live real quality generations of, of wealth. What does the Bible say about this since you're a very active um, I'm, I'm a Jesus girl. Yeah. I'm a Jesus what girl. What does the Bible say about this? this um, I, I, I love that you bring that up because Solomon, who was the wisest and richest man, is mm. the one who also will tell you, you know, laughter is good medicine. Mm. You know, he will tell you he was wealthy. He was rich. Mm. He was not foreign to the idea of collecting, mm. you know, and living for his children. Yeah. But he was also big on taking care of the body, mm. on taking care of the spirit, mm -hmm. you know, because when you take care of the spirit, that's where you and your savior collect. That's where you and Jesus meet. Yeah. You know, when you take care of the spirit, you can hear the spirit even more. You can hear Jesus lead even more. Yeah. And, and he never leads you in, in paths of, you know, unrighteousness. That's, yeah. that's a very good answer. Now, can you brag a little bit about your success cases? I like that. Um, uh, before and after situation. Without mentioning names. Ooh, I like that. Mm. Um, because, because I like the word bread because I'm only learning how to do that now because <laughs> I thought I need to be humble. But now I want to, I want to brag. I have had some corporate, um, corporate jobs mm. that have really been good where I would take a corporate setting and change the atmosphere for eating healthy, right? Mm. Just saying you don't have to be eating this. How yeah, do you install... Um, installing cafeterias, right? Um, so some corporates and Khaboroni would be set up in a way that they don't use that cafeteria. Mm. Right, they, they don't eat from it. But it's there. You, it's money. Yeah. You spent money on this, right? And so how do we create menus that can really sustain? So either sandwiches that are healthy, wraps that are healthy, meats that are healthy, so that your people know that they, don't, they can always dip in and out at a discounted price. And that is something that I want to be working on even more with more corporates to say, how do you make sure that your staff is taken care of? Right, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And then also from just family settings to be able to change the whole mindset of families mm -hmm. to say for a mother, father, children, right, you came at certain numbers, you know, six months later, I must say, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yours truly, yeah, yours yeah, truly, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, there are a, a huge um, line of work that is coming my way. Um, there's this new life balance. I'm working on a work diet balance, you mm. know, just not just life, but also balancing with food. Mm. You know, so God's been so good um, in that channels so, so, are just so, opening. So these corporates you assisted, do you ever go back after six months? After yes, the, year? the idea is to. This was actually before COVID and now because people work from home, is just to say, how do we set new routines for that, mm. right? But it's nice because people are getting back into the corporate space, mm -hmm. right? And then it'd be easy to assess. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy to assess, you know. One thing that I really want to work on is the idea of Masabe. Mm -hmm. How do you get Mewa Payang in the street to cook healthy food? Okay. Because she also needs to make profits. But you don't need her killing the nation. Mm. You don't need her making people unhealthy. Mm. Because it's what some people can afford. But mm. how can she do it in a way that, you know... Well, you go to an average samosa, you just see terrible food. You don't, mm. can't even get an orange. Mm. Ooh. You wonder why. Mm. So. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And, 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 and this is not right because then it's such a vicious cycle. Mm. You come in Monday to Friday, that's what you're eating. Mm. You know, Monday to Friday, that's what you're eating. It's like you're, you're, you're digging your own grave with mm. your teeth. With your fucking knife. Mm. With your fucking Sometimes knife. With your teeth. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. Now, um, Let's talk about brand Tato now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What can we look at when we 
grab that crystal ball and, and look down maybe a decade or, or two down the mm. line? Oh, what a question. Oh, well, thank you so much for these questions. I love them. <laughs> yeah. I love them because they propel a part of me that has been hidden, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, like I'm saying, I, 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 am going to be, I am going to be a dynamite in the space, in the industry, mm -hmm. right? Uh, going to create restaurants and cafes that really normalize healthy eating, mm -hmm. normalize good eating for children, for families, right? Mm -hmm. Also creating and building awareness, working with companies, working with local companies, local farmers, mm -hmm. entities to really say, this is our Botswana, it's our food, and this is how we make it healthy. So in 10 years, I promise you, a monument, mm -hmm. a monument, I will wow. be a leader in the space. When you say that, you, you, you make me think of a company such as Whole Foods, mm -hmm. which was bought by Amazon. Yes, yes. And uh, the way it is impacting the landscape and um, all these supermarkets now are everywhere. And they're strictly Whole Foods, literally as the name implies. And uh, sometimes I wonder whether that is heading to this part of the world. It is, it is really. And I, I look at people's groceries when I'm shopping, mm. you know, and I just see people really pushing for healthier. Mm. What I think people need is direction and awareness and saying there's so much information out there. How do we source out what is right? Mm. You know, because people will be saying, I'm banting, I'm dieting, I'm what, what, what. So people want to eat healthy. Mm. So it's for voices like ours to rise up and really give the direction, be the compass of what that looks like. But do you think uh, in that sense, COVID was a great awakening. It really was. It was such a great loss, but such a great awakening as well. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what the future holds. And who wants to be a fool if something like this was to happen again and you're found in the same space? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the country is, is, is engaging, is getting to a space where we're saying that these marathons, how can you make sure that, you know, you're staying fit for marathons? Mm -hmm. You know, comrades in South Africa is a huge thing, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And so Botswana is also getting into that space where people want to engage in physical activity. Mm -hmm. But you can't separate the physical activity from the eating right you just mm -hmm. you just can't discount eating the right two are inextricably tied. yes sir yes sir All right convincing the children to eat vegetables do you have any tricks or any suggestions as to how parents can do that yes first of all parents shouldn't give up mm. i think parents every time i i, I hear a parent hey wahan, they won't do it i say you give up it should never be a thing to give up should we ethically brand them tied to yeah, yes, you must, really, you know. I mean, for me, it was never a choice. There was the food on the table, that's it. Broccoli for dinner, that's it. There's no other option. You know, you don't get anything else. But of course, we use tricks as well. You know, sometimes you might bake the vegetables. So when you bake them with chicken, it's, it's the best of both worlds. You know, they don't feel like, okay, it's vegetables only, you know. So you try ways in which, because you, you, it's not just about eating, it's also about good quality food. It's also about good quality food. So if they're just eating bread, 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 polony, cheese, bread, 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 mm. what are you raising? Mm. You know, how are they going to pass in school? Because mm. their brain is fed nonsense. Yeah. But when you feed them chemicals that are really good for their neurons, they have better listening capacity, mm. they have better memory, you know. And so, so, so how, do, how do we persuade them to eat their veggies? Like I'm saying, it's how you prepare them as well. Mm. Don't make it a war. It's how you prepare them. Involve them in preparing the food. Mm -hmm. Involve them. Let them taste the food. Sometimes we don't give children chores in the kitchen and we give them a finished product. Mm. And they're like, I don't know what this is. But mm. when they're in it, they're blending it. Sometimes they put it in their juices. It really becomes like, mm. wow, okay, okay. So involve, them involve them. Involve them. Teach them. Be patient to teach them. Yeah. You know, or if it doesn't work just you know like you're saying bribe them mm. bribe them if there's one thing you could do to influence the ministry of health mm. um, on this issue to get Botswana to eat right what is it that you'd urge them to do or what what if you had the power what would you get I, them to do? I am biased I am biased I would hire dietitians I would take students to school for dietetics mm. I would really hire ev like every hospital would be overflowing with dietitians everyone on the bedside would be seeing a dietitian you know no, before you're even unhealthy you know it's yeah, interesting you say that because I, I was passing the morning early by marina and I saw the queue super long queue and uh, I can't help when you mention this that how much shorter would the queue be mm. if people were eating healthy right so right we were getting up at five four o'clock because I had to drop someone who was catching a bus to go to Joburg uh, my son actually so I was saying these queues are massive and I thought to myself 
you know, these queues could be shortened if people would stop eating maguena mm. and would cut down on the meat. Cut Just down on the sugar. The, the little the things. Sugar, yeah. you, look, we're not asking anybody to fast. We're not asking people to stop eating. Mm. We're just saying alternate how you eat your food. And reduce. You know, have your potatoes. Have your morojo. It's everywhere now. Have your cabbage. Mm. Do not fry so much, you know. So that's what I would so tell the ministry. So you think by putting dietitians in every hospital... That would have what impact? Do you know that's actually what happened with the Blue Zones? There were uh-huh. more nutritionists. Loma Linda literally put out more alternative nutritionists, dietitians, to teach people about how to eat healthy. Yeah, yeah that's what happened with the Blue Zones. Okay. Yeah. In Japan, they don't call them dietitians because everybody eats right. Mm. You know, but uh, you, you would think everybody is just, you know, mm. everybody else is just a dietitian. So if we want to have good nutrition density, mm. we need to teach it. Mm. We need to teach it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this is the time when you can ask me a question of your choice, madam. Yes, sir. I must, I must ask this one. Um, your bank balance, mm. yes. Would you want that to create generational wealth? Is it something that you would want to see more Botswana doing for people? Do you think Botswana is in a space to create more generational wealth? Are we at that space? Or are we still just creating personal, personal wealth? Well, I think a lot about intergenerational wealth. I think a lot about uh, passing it on to mm-hmm. future generations. And indeed, this uh, platform is an effort to conscientize the generations that are coming behind us to be more aware of, of uh, um, the importance of entrepreneurship, the importance of wealth creation, and so on and so forth. So when you say my bank balance, I don't have much of a bank balance because the way I operate is that I just have enough for emergencies. Mm. The rest that I make, I reinvest. Oh, beautiful. I reinvest either back into the business or into projects. So I'm not sitting on a mountain of cash. I don't believe in that. Uh, I'd rather have just enough for emergencies and then make sure that the rest is just about sustaining the business. That's how we've managed to scale and to grow. But yes, I believe intergenerational wealth uh, but I try not to force it. Mm. Um, I, uh, my attitude is that these kids should see the value that we are providing and should be, become part of it. I don't think I can shove things down their throat. So I tend to think that God has a bigger idea about all this and what's going to come out of it. My job is just to make the opportunity available to, to my children. Beautiful. And to see whether they will take Thank you for teaching so me that not yeah. to sit on the zeros when they finally come, yeah. but to reinvest them. Correct. But to reinvest them. Yeah. Have enough for emergencies, yeah. but be out there and plant the seeds. That's the purpose yeah. of this movement. Yeah. It's mm. for reinvestment to grow the brand and to create more employment and to, to you know, to, to create um, an ecosystem. That's true. Uh, That's which true. Which is self-sustaining. That's what we try to do. That is my nugget takeaway today. <laughs> that is my now, nugget takeaway. To take conclude away. our conversation, you look at that camera. Yes, sir. And speak to that uh, individual who's watching you and leave them with something inspirational, something motivational, some take-home. Okay. Work. All yeah. right. All yeah. right. This is Tatan Zoning, the holistic dietitian. Somebody once said to me, what is the point of being a dietitian if tomorrow... Um, I could be struck by a truck. Those words hurt me. They made me so small. I was like, but he's right. What's the point of eating healthy if tomorrow you could be stuck by a truck? You know? But then I also thought, what if tomorrow you are not hit by a truck and you're living life and you're living it for the many years to come? So this is why it's really important that in your everyday living, now when God has gifted us breath, the choices that we make really edify our bodies, edify our energies, edify our generational wealth. You know, what is the point of having all of this if you can't enjoy it? So please make sure that in your daily shopping, your daily eating, your daily dieting, and all that you do really, these are temples. They are cathedrals for good health. They are cathedrals for good wealth as well. You know, so whether you sit at the office, you're a stay-at-home mummy, you're an entrepreneur, you really want to be mindful and very intentional about living well and living right. I like how you call them cathedrals, not just temples. Oh, no, no, no. Like and you know how cathedrals stay? When you visit a place, you want to see it. Yeah. And you just, you take it all in. Yeah. It's beautiful. Absolutely. You're like, oh, my. So imagine a whole body. And some of them are five, six right, years old. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. when God says, these are temples. Yeah. And that, oh, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah, that's, that's huge. massive. 
Uh, tell them about NutriCure yes, Clinic, NutriCure Clinic. Where to find it? What they can expect from it? And also your other contact details. Yes, um, NutriCure Clinic is housed in Atlaga Healthcare Center, mm-hmm. Atlaga Medical Center in Fairgrounds. We are a new baby in Fairgrounds, and we see patients with doctors' referrals, of course. Patients who deal with um, chronic issues, fatigue, corporate patients, fitness. If you want to engage, especially in the coming summer, it's hot, so that means people are hitting the streets, running. How do you make sure that you know what you're eating can sustain all of that, right? And then on Instagram, it is the Holistic Diet as well as on Facebook, and then NutriCure Clinic as well on Facebook. You can catch it for um, posts on awareness, on what we are working on, and, you know, how it is that we can serve our community better. Okay, did you give them a contact Oh, line? yes. Contact line is 73280870. That's simple. Very easy to remember. 73280870. Okay. Yes. But even your doctors should have that number. You know, you can ask your doctor. People always ask, how come my doctor doesn't refer? Well, you can tell your doctor that I want to see this dietitian, and I'm pretty sure they'll be very happy to refer. Okay. So we're always open to working with doctors as well. Okay. Mansone, you've been a great oh guest. Oh, my. Oh, my. You've done a wonderful job. Oh, my. Job. Thank you, sir. It's been such an honor being here. You've been a great host. Okay, thank you I very much. I have a lot to think about tonight.